Mandy Bryce, and I am the host of the Bold Moves podcast. Thank you so much for listening today. I am chatting with Naomi Sodomin, who has had a really interesting life starting out in Miami in an area actually recognized on TV for being a low income area full of Haitians. And recognized in that program with the goal of someday coming up into better circumstances and she of course tells a story so much better than I do so I hope you enjoy episode 235 with Naomi Sodomin. Hello everyone I am so excited to be chatting today with Naomi Sodomin. Welcome to the show Naomi. Thank you for having me I'm so excited to be here. My pleasure. So you know that the show is called Bold Moves, and you wouldn't be on here if you hadn't made some yourself. And for those who are watching on YouTube or seeing the clip that I post on Instagram later, you can tell that she's just bright and has beautiful energy, but also bright colors. So I feel like that speaks to (laughs) boldness as well. But why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are, your story, and some of the risks that you've taken to bring you to where you are today? Well, my well, I started out as a regis- as a registered nurse, and my story goes back to the inner city where you know I was. My father was incarcerated when I was nine years old, and so I was this little girl. My mom was an immigrant from Haiti who couldn't read or write. Wow. And um, for a long time, I was really ashamed of that story, believe it or not. Um, but I, I, I really wanted to to break out of the inner city. I always felt like I could do more. I always hear this little voice inside of me that says, you can do more, be more. And so I found that my way out at the time was if I could get an education. So I followed the traditional education path. I was naturally smart and things, learning came to me easily. So it was like, oh yeah, I can do that. So I'm getting out. So that was my ticket and hope that I would lend a scholarship to college, which I did. Um, And then I chose the, the, I went into nursing and I became a registered nurse and I've always had drive. And so a lot of my friends graduated, they stayed home and I was in Florida. They were making about $15 an hour. And I, since I was 10 years old, I was going to make $80,000 a year. And I don't know why $80,000, but in my 10 year old mind, $80,000 would mean that I could have the life that I wanted. (laughs) (laughs) $80,000 is really a lot for a 10 year old. And where did you? Yeah. So to my family, I was, you know, we were sleeping on people couches. We were homeless half of the time. So to them, it was like, you know, you're crazy out of her mind. Right. (laughs) But it yeah. stayed with me. It was one of the biggest goals, and I was going to meet that goal. And I graduated school, and I got my first job. And I remember they were paying me fifteen dollars an hour. I'm like, well, I'm never going to make eighty thousand. A lot of hours. So I, I got really aggressive <laughs> and um, started looking at my way out. What's my option out? And so, so my very first bold move, because I'm Haitian, we we live almost like if you don't know anything about the Haitian community, we're a lot like the Mexican, you know, okay. we have no tribes, we don't leave home, you don't do that. So my first bold move was to take a training with Emory University Hospital mm-hmm. and, um, and leave everything I knew, everybody I knew, all the food, um, all the culture stuff, the language and move to Atlanta University, uh, Atlanta, where Emory University Hospital offered to train me in every single department. Mm-hmm. And they were only paying $20 an hour, but my, I was like, we're on our way. <laughs> yeah. I was always chasing the that's, $80,000. That's and, 33% more than you were making before. That's a significant jump. That's even a though significant that's... price. So I'm like, yes, yeah, sign me up. <laughs> and I get to Georgia, and my next bold move was... After working for a year, I did get all the training and I was really, really trained. Um, I got an offer to really become what's more popular now, and it wasn't as popular back then. Uh, I got an offer to become a travel nurse. Okay. And which one of my goals was, you know, I wanted to travel. I wanted to see the Golden Gate Bridge. And I thought, 
really, and they were going to pay for my moves and my stays. And, and, and I was, I went from making, I think, $21 an hour to they were paying me in the high fifties. Okay. And so that was my next bold move. I remember telling my uncle how I was going to go to California to take my first assignment. And he's like, honey, who do you know there? I'm like, nobody. I said, but I'll make some friends while I'm yeah. on the airplane. <laughs> I don't have to know anybody. And so, yeah, I took my very first job in California, knew nobody, arrived at 2 a.m. in the morning um, to San Jose. You used to live in the Bay Area, so you might know yeah. San Jose. Oh, I know San Jose. San Jose International Airport. Norman Minetta. dream. <laughs> there you go. I love that. <laughs> So it, it, it so happened. I, um, so I did that for, for several years. By then I was, you know, really doubling, tripling my income. You know, I was making a good six figure income as a traveler. And then when you I beat decided that 80. I kept working my way up the corporate ladder, and then pretty soon I was pretty much running a surgery center for a group of physicians. And at the top of my career, I was making 250 K. Wow. My life. I pull that 80 amazing right so yeah. here i am i've got this amazing life i married the love of my life and he's making a six-figure income i bought my dream house in the bay area i mean i live in a nice town called benicia i'm right by the water you know um a dollar cup of tea you know it's, it's like like how did this inner city kid <laughs> <laughs> go from that to that and people just couldn't understand but there was just this this really where I didn't feel fulfilled anymore. And so I was 32 years old and I looked up and I'm like, well, holy crap, everything I've cut out a magazine. I didn't even know that they were called vision board. Mm -hmm. But at the time, as a kid, I was cutting them out, pasting them over my wall. I'm going to go see the wall of tears. I'm obsessed with Jurassic Park. I'm going to go <laughs> see the Golden Gate Bridge. Well, I had lived next to the Golden Bay Bridge for about five years and walked the bridge, run the bridge three times a week for fitness. Day. Every single dream I had, um, I'd achieve. So then the sense of emptiness, came. I felt unfulfilled. I'm like, now what? And I can't really tell people. I can't really explain it to them. Mm -hmm. And I started feeling really guilty for the life that I had and knowing that my siblings doesn't have that life. My cousins doesn't have that life. And why would you want any more, you know? And, um, uh, you know, I started feeling, you know, uh, my mom even said a couple of times to me that I think you're a little greedy. And I started that, those programmings in our mind, right? Yeah, the money And mindset. so what our families tell us, we started taking things taken out. And I just stayed. I just stayed and I continued to do it, continued to do it. And then it got to a point when my son was born, I was stuck. I was definitely stuck, but I was making great money. So just shut up and do it. And yeah. after my son came, um, I, a couple of years after he got here, I realized that the lesson I was teaching my son was to stay stuck mm -hmm. and that you couldn't take a different direction. We have this tendency to to go into a career, to do something. And then we, 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 just, we just get stuck even if we don't like it. We can't make a change because we've invested so much time and, and so much energy. And, um, and I felt like I needed, to, I needed to make another bold move. Mm -hmm. And so um, I literally, I didn't quit right away. I didn't quit, but what I did was I took a job. I went from 250K and took a job for $80,000 a year. That and I mean, I literally had to beg for the job. No one would want it to hire me. They're like, like, you know, we can never pay you that kind of money. Like, why would you yeah. do this? And it was just the craziest thing. And from there, I just worked a couple of days a week for about a year or so, just really so I can figure out, you know, what's my next move, who I am, what is it that I'm supposed to do um in the plea of wanting to leave the struggle the mm -hmm. poverty uh wanting to do better for myself i had lost myself mm -hmm. so i didn't really understand who i was and so my next bold move was you know to hire someone to hire a coach and a mentor 
um, but I wanted someone that had worked with highly successful people. So it was a upfront investment of $19,000 upfront. So that was my next bold move for this, this mentor to take me and say, this is who you are, to give me assignments for me to go back and figure out who I was without my corporate um, uniform on. Yeah, without that identity. Okay, yeah. so then what happened, what happened next? And so from that, my company Embrace the Mirror was born because I learned so many things about myself that I needed to embrace who I was. I needed mm -hmm. to embrace that I am an individual who continue to want to grow, that I am an individual who has gifts and talents to share with the world, and yeah. that I no longer wanted to be trapped by my corporate job. I wanted freedom in my life. I wanted flexibility in my life and, and accepting and embracing the, the older version of myself. And so that's why my company Embrace the Mirror was born. And so, so then the very first thing that I did was I really didn't know if I could mentor people. And, and, and ironically, my profession as a nurse prepared me for that because I did a lot of mentoring of new grads. Uh, sure. When they came in, I ran the programs, I mentored them. And so um, to build my confidence, to have my confidence that I can mentor people, that I can make a difference in their life, mm -hmm. I spent six months in the beginning just mentoring um, people for free. And right. that's how my company was created. And so um, it's been just a beautiful journey. <laughs> <laughs> so amazing. <laughs> I love it. I was just going to say that's amazing. <laughs> Perfect. Well, what you're describing, and it's so funny that you say like you couldn't tell people that because your mom said you were greedy and people just didn't understand. Like, I feel like that's the whole like feeling behind this podcast is that regardless of whether it is coming from a position of poverty and the bold move of getting out or coming from a position of being very financial financially comfortable and then making the bold move of risking that or stepping down from that, you know, cost of living or lifestyle that you're used yeah. to, to f go after what will really make you happy. Like whether it's a new job, a place across the country, whatever it is, is just the idea that you don't have to accept you know, the status quo or stay on a trajectory that you are on because of your college degree or because of what your parents want or because of whatever. And that a bold move is just anything that you need to do to go after what makes you happy. So I love that you've done so many. And I always say on almost every podcast that I rarely meet somebody that's just done one bold move. It's usually a People who make bold moves tend to make multiple, and that seems like that's definitely the case for you. So, yeah, yeah. It's funny because when, when my assistant told me about your podcast, uh, Bold Moves, and I'm like, and I started tracking, and I'm like, oh my God, I've made a lot of them. Yeah. <laughs> when I was making this move, it felt like it was my very first bold move that I was making, right? Because yeah. the bold moves, it, 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 it's scary, right? It, it's scary. Right. It's intimidating. Um, your heart's racing. You don't know what the outcome is going to be. It feels like you're jumping off a cliff. Right. And so, um, <laughs> so yeah, I've had a couple. <laughs> yeah, that's why I always like to ask people, like, what's the scariest one? What's the scariest one for you that you've done? The scariest moment or the scariest move you've made or thing you've gone through? You know, believe it or not, this last move was the scariest for me. Mm -hmm. Because it was, um, it was risking everything I had. Right. Uh, we don't like failure, right? Because we right. see failure as a threat, but we have to fail in order to succeed. So I, 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 don't, I don't ever see anything as a failure. But when you're making a bold move, just like everyone else, I think the difference between us that makes bold move is we're willing to act despite the fear. Right. Um, I didn't really understand the world that I wanted to play in. Mm -hmm. So it was very scary. Um, I, I came from a medical background. I'm not techie. Um, I don't understand. I understand business in a sense because I, I managed a surgery center and I've worked with people. I, I understand that, mm -hmm. but I didn't understand the world that I was going to play in. 
And so yeah. that there was absolutely no guarantee that I was going to have any success. Sure. Um, as a matter of fact, my husband said to me, you know, I didn't even think this was going to work. Um, <laughs> I remember the very first thing I did, the very first thing I did was I had this idea that I wanted to run a summit. Mm -hmm. And that I, and, and I said, the only way for me to get out of the nursing world that I'm in, because I'm around doctors and nurses and they don't understand what I'm doing. So pretty much I had to like leave my tribe, my people. Mm -hmm. And yeah. go out and I needed to find the people that were like me and I said the only way I'm going to be able to do that is for me to go out and do a summit and I started reading about what I could do and I learned a little bit about summit and start interviewing these people so I can find where they are <laughs> <laughs> and my husband's like how are you gonna do that I have no idea how you're gonna <laughs> physical world but I promise you I'm going to do it and and I launched yeah. my very first summit which is which was called embrace the mirror where yeah. I actually went out and interviewed 21 experts who were um we talked from everything about relationship to business and and sure. and that's that was my very first first breakthrough um that got me connected with mentors and coaches and and people that was actually in this world and and that world that I wanted to play in the new game that I wanted to play. I love that. And I love that you're calling it a game because I think doing that from the experts who I've listened to or read takes a little bit of the pressure off because you're like, all right, this is an experiment. And you know, like you're not going to die worst case scenario. And yes, you do have your husband potentially depending on you and your son depending on you and your husband. So there's the pressure of that, but you'll never know unless you try. And I think it's fabulous that you're like, I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it. <laughs> and you made it happen. So how did you push past that fear? And how long ago was this last bold move? Um, so this one was two and a half years ago. Embrace the mirror is growing really, really fast. Um, my husband says, well, well, when did this, when did this thing get so big? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, a lot of it was building the online component. So I'm like, I'm never really on Facebook just fooling around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But but it's it's um yeah, it's been about two and a half years where we're 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 fairly new company. We're growing really fast. Um, how did I move past the fear? Getting back to your question. Here's what I learned about fear. Every time you're playing a new game you're going to be afraid. Mm -hmm. Even in the game that you're playing, every time you're going to go to a new level, you're going to be afraid. So even when I was a child, even in the inner city, some of the things that I would do, I was curious about the, the fear. I wanted to know why I'm afraid of it. Right. And so what I've learned in my journey that you can't, get rid of fear you can't overcome fear it's always going to be a factor there mm -hmm. and so the only thing that actually works with fear is for you to take action yeah and so the moment the moment you start taking action then the fear lessen and so for me now fear has become like a friend so whenever i'm about to do something and I'm really scared. And so it's, it's like, okay, there's a message here. Um, so if you look at it from, you know, we have the ego, right? The ego is there to protect you. You know, if you were to climb up on a building and 10 story building and you look down and your ego would go, don't do that. You may die. <laughs> <laughs> right? you. So it's great that we have that mechanism in place. And I think that's the mechanism that, you know, that tell you don't quit your job. Um, what are you going to do to support yourself? And it's, right. it's intended for our good, mm -hmm. uh, but it's when we allow it to not let us act on the things that are important to us, the dreams that we have. When we allow that to happen, then what happened is we can't grow with stifle ourselves. When in reality, your subconscious mind, your spirit already has the answer. It already knows how to create it. So mm -hmm. when you're being called to do something, it's because you already know how to do it. 
You, right. But you're not conscious that you know how to. And so it's, 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 it's moving past that fear. It's, it's actually taking that action. So for me, it's always, I got to take an action and I got to take it immediately. Um, <laughs> it's funny. I, was, um, I launched my book, Embrace the Mirror, and, and it became an international bestseller. This was last December, December of 2018. And the woman that was working with me, she says, Naomi, you are the most fearless person I've ever met. And we were talking and I started laughing. I said, I am the most fearful person you just ever met. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, the only reason why it looks like I'm fearless is because when the fear is kicking my butt, I just got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> result that you're seeing it's me fighting with fear <laughs> so i'm like i'm just gonna do a job <laughs> yeah absolutely i love that i think and that almost reminds me of that meme that goes around that says like I recommend exercising in the morning before my brain understands what I'm doing. It's like before you can think of it, think about it too much, talk yourself out of it, just yes. keep moving or put one foot in front of the other, even if it's a small right. way to get that ball rolling and, and get going on it. I love that. So you've said that with Embrace the Mirror that you do some mentoring. Can you tell me a little bit more about your book and about Embrace the Mirror in general and what you're doing these days as your business is growing? Yeah, so so we'll 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 talk about embrace the mirror as as a general. So embrace the mirror, it's a it's a company that we do a lot of coaching and mentoring mm -hmm. of um, senior executive level women that are that are like me that wants to leave their corporate job. They want freedom, flexibility, but okay. they want to learn how to run a successful business that makes great money. Um, so they can have the freedom to do what they want to do, the flexibility to do what they want to do and profit from it. Sure. And um, so instead of taking the leap and just jump and quit your job, that's not our model. That's not our philosophy. It's, it's, it's the transition. Sure. It's helping you do the transition because for myself, I had to do the transition. You know, I had to give up the 250 K because it ate up all my time. I got up, I went, I got up at 6 a.m. I didn't get home till 6 p.m. Um, to taking the $80,000 cut to going, okay, now I can work part-time. Now I can work two days a week until my business can actually support my lifestyle. Sure. And so that's really what we do. We work with those type of women who are really serious. They're self-motivated. You know, they're coachable. And then they have a willing willingness to learn. Mm -hmm. And so my book actually embraced the mirror. It's a, it's a, it's a book about self-discovery, awakening your spirit. And it's also a collection of my own personal stories of triumphs and failure um, okay. that will inspire you to take a look at, Oh my God, look at all of the failures she's had. Look at all of the successes that she has. And I think when you want to make a bold move, you need to awaken your spirit. Mm -hmm. Because inside of you, you have the tools. And so if you can just go within and find your own strength and shut out the noise that what everybody's telling you, this is not going to work, da, 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 yeah. all the stuff that we hear, if you can just turn within and awaken your own spirit, you begin to find your own truth. And then you begin to do that self-discovery, like, oh my God, like this is who I am. And I think that is what really helped you to take your next bold move. Yeah, that makes sense. And I love that. And I'm so glad that you cover that and talk about that transition because of course there are people who I've interviewed who did that and just kind of up and quit and like jumped and grew wings on their way down. And then there's others who have, you know, planned for it and thought about the transition and saved up an extra, you know, amount of money that helps them last for so many months and so on. So it's always interesting to me to hear the logistical aspect of how that works or what people have done too, because there's such a wide variety of paths to take, of course. So that's really cool. Yeah. And I think one, one other thing that I like about the transitioning model and when I, you know, when I was transitioning, I was really responsible with my money. So I had a lot of money to invest 
up front. I, you know, I invest 19K in a coach right up front. Mm -hmm. um, it's that I feel that when you have the pressure of trying to figure out what you're going to eat, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> how you're going to pay your bills, <laughs> Right. then you don't, you lose your creativity because your focus is on getting clients. And, and that's one of the things that I see a lot in the entrepreneurial world. And so if your focus is simply on getting clients, you can't figure out, okay, how do I help people? How do I serve people? Mm -hmm. Because really, truly the growth come in, in serving someone, it comes in changing someone's world, you know, how right. am I going to make a difference in your world? What processes am I going to have? To, to do that? What system am I going to put in place to do that? And so that's why um, I, I don't think neither is wrong, but I feel that if you can um, transition where if you're in a full-time job right now mm -hmm. and you're working full-time, you can say, okay, I need to work full-time for the next year, but right. I'm going to spend two hours, you know, a week working on my business. Or instead of going to that girls, you know, girls to go get together right. <laughs> with my nurse's friends. So what I would do was I was still working, you know, I was making 80,000, but I still had to show up. I still had a real job. But mm -hmm. instead of doing that, that girl to girls get together on that weekend, well, I was paying for a, 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 a nanny to come in that weekend to be a babysitter, to come in and be with my son that weekend. So I would have, I'd put four hours into my business. Does that make sense? I'd yeah, absolutely. Four hours into my business. So I was, you know, um, putting an hour here, an hour there, a couple of hours here. And so you build it until it allow you to replace the income that you had. And then now you can actually leave your job. Absolutely. I think it's goes down to Maslow's hierarchy of needs in that once you have everything you need in place is when you can really flourish. And I've definitely been on different ups and downs of my entrepreneurial journey where I haven't been able to express myself as creatively because perhaps I'm waiting on checks from six different clients. And my first thought is not like, what new program can I make to help someone? Or like, I can right. work on my book now. It's like, okay, what do I have to do to make sure that I don't have to borrow money for rent or, you know, eat weird leftover things that are around the house until I can afford to go back to Whole Foods or something. So right. <laughs> that, like you might not be able to get the running start as soon as you want, but then once you do, you can do it a lot less stressfully <laughs> right and then a lot quicker because you you grow you know you grow quicker it's um i'm part of a global leadership program and everyone's like oh my god like what are you doing you're just like the queen of wins you win at everything but part of that it's because i don't have you know i never had the stress of of you know my mortgage is not going to be paid this month you know sure. or i don't have enough food this month Sure, there's, I, I had to definitely, um, you know, when you cut your lifestyle from 250 to now you're making $80,000, I definitely had to do some shift, mm -hmm. you know, but you still have a way of feeding yourself, a way of meeting those, you know, those basic needs, yes. Yeah, and it's by design. It's not like, oh, I was blessed with a fairy that dropped, <laughs> dropped off this money, but you, you know, did it's it. funny. It's Tell funny you say thing. that. It's by design because I had that exact conversation with um, my husband. Mm -hmm. um, right now, my, my company is to the point where, where my, all my focus needs to go on is, is, um, is on sales and marketing. And mm -hmm. so I'm actually in the market for a mentor for in sales and marketing, right? And yeah. I met a great woman and, and I'm having this conversation with her and everything. And I said to my husband today, I said, you know, this journey has taught me that everyone who is a multimillionaire, who's well off, who has the lifestyle, they are all self-made. I said, I used to think that I'm like the only kid that, 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 Plucked out of the ghetto. <laughs> 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 I said, but then I hear her story about being in the Midwest, about living with an alcoholic mom that, you know, it is, it's, it's, it's by design. It's a choice that we're making. It's, sure. it's not something that you just, you just on a silver platter. It's, 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 it's a conscious choice that, 
we have made, whether you've made the choice consciously or unconsciously, but it's still a choice and it is by design. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that makes perfect sense. I keep forgetting to ask where you grew up. I know you said that. I grew up in Miami. In Miami. Okay. So and from lived, Miami and I, to Georgia. And I grew up in little Haiti. So we have, so we have little Havana. Miami is very interesting if you've yeah. never been there. So we've got little Havana, little Mexico, little Haiti, where all the Haitians leave. Little Havana was where all the Cubans are. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's quite an interesting place. <laughs> I've only spent one brief weekend in Miami, so I need to go yeah. back and explore again. But <laughs> it's yeah, like- as a matter of fact, my neighborhood, my neighborhood was was featured in sixty minutes as one yeah. of the four cities in America. Yeah. Oh wow, pretty interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. <laughs> so so it's not it's not what happened to you; mm-hmm. it's what you do with what happened to you. It's not about the stories that you tell yourself. It's about, you know, what story am I going to write? It's about what's the next chapter of my life? What story am I going to write? You know, and um, luckily for me, even as a child, I never took on the, the, the victim mentality. I always wanted to know okay, what do I do next? How, what am I going to do next? How my life is going to turn out. Yeah, I love that. And I love that that magic 80,000 is what came back when you're like, I guess I can step down to my ultimate goal of 80,000 later when you went back to part-time. That's really cool that that number stood out to you. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, I'm back at 80. (laughs) (laughs) And so, and so also the other lesson in that, that I learned personally is that a lot of the time, and I, I and, and I told my husband that I said a lot of the time we, we get stuck because we refuse to take a step backward, right? Mm-hmm. But sometimes in order to take another step forward, you need to take a step backward, and you may have to take two backward step, right? So yeah. going from two hundred fifty thousand dollars to eighty thousand dollars, wow, that's that's stepping backward. We're supposed to be growing up the ladder, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, And here I was going down the ladder, but sometimes you may need to take a step backward so -hmm. that you are fully capable of moving forward. I love that. And I think that's so important to remember. I was a teacher for many years and on the side of teaching, I would do these like promotional things and like promotional modeling. And when I had to go back to that after a few years of doing makeup artistry and modeling without doing promos, because those are usually night and weekend gigs, which I generally try to save for, you know, spending time with my husband and such. And going back to those was really hard, but it was like, okay, if you think of, if I think of those jobs as being like mini venture capitalists toward my business, like, especially with moving a couple of times, like if you're moving from Milwaukee to Palo Alto, it's okay yeah. to have to do a side job. <laughs> Really hard for me because I was like, oh, I feel like a failure. I'm too old to be doing this. And I'm like, well, they're still hiring me, so I'm not too old. And I had to think of it as being my own little weekend venture capitalist to, to make it happen. So I yeah. appreciate that you're willing to share that aspect of your journey because I think it's so important to remember that backward isn't always bad. So it isn't always bad. And, and having a job is not a bad thing. Right. Even if you're unhappy in a job, you, you know, I always said, you know, that, you know, they are, you have to see them as your, as the person who's going to fund your dream. You know, I I call them an investor. They are an investor. If you're working your job and, and, and you're doing your job, but you get these two, three hours, you know, um, I took a job at a, at, at, at a local hospital, um, when I stepped down and they have this position called per diem in nursing where, you get because because my business got to the point where I couldn't do full time anymore, so I was part time, and I couldn't do part time anymore because it's growing. So then I needed more flexibility. So they yeah. have this position where, as needed, so you sure. you tell them these are the days that I want to work, and if they need you, they use you. If they don't need you, you use you. It's a little bit uncomfortable because you never know if you're right. working or not. You might be in a mindset I'm working, and then you're not. Yeah. And, um, and I did that for two years, for, for, for about a year and a half. And yeah. I said, boy, I can't believe how much they funded my dream. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, it was just what they are. They were funding my dream. I was still working on my big dream. Um, I was still 
you know, coming and having that two hours to sit down and, and write my book that I was working on, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's just, um, I guess we need to see the positive aspect of having a job because when you're on the job, you're tired, you're working long hours, mm -hmm. you don't have freedom, you don't have the freedom you want to work on your dream. And especially if you have small children, you don't have the energy to give them. We tend to focus so much on that, but it can right. also be a positive thing if you know that you are working on your big dream on the side. Absolutely. It's all about that little perspective shift. So yes. <laughs> yeah, I love that. So speaking of shifts, you've gone from medical to executive coaching, and I'm sure it was a winding road in between. I'm wondering during, I'm, I'm sure you went over this with the coach that you hired and you talked about doing some soul searching. I'm wondering if you know your purpose and if so, if you wouldn't mind sharing it with us. Oh, wow. You know, my purpose is to is to motivate, inspire, and teach. Yeah. Um, I'm a teacher by heart. And as a matter of fact, when I looked at my life, I'm like, oh, I don't even understand how I ended up in nursing because I love to teach. Sure. But what we have is we take our, our, our gifts and our talents and we put it in a box. You know what right. I mean? So yeah. teaching can only happen in a school. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Teaching yeah. can only happen in this setting. But I was always teaching. I was always mentoring in my profession. And so it was taking the skills. And a lot of the time when you're, you know, when you're, especially if you're leaving corporate America, if you're watching this, you're listening to this podcast and you plan to leave corporate America, make a list of what are your skill sets? What are my skill set? What do I already possess? Well, I, I had already possessed the ability to teach. I had already possessed the ability to inspire new nurses, to motivate them, to show them what they needed to do, to give them the tools that they needed so that they can succeed. And mm -hmm. so you are already prepared. It's just sitting down and making a list of that. So my that's my purpose, to teach, motivate, and inspire. I mean, I could teach all day long and I'm yeah. never tired. I can motivate all day long. I'm crazy on stage. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. I love it. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm never tired because I'm living in my purpose and it, it doesn't feel like work. You know, right. it's, um, I was on a phone with a woman this morning and, and, and I'm trying to get a curriculum for my son, a different curriculum for my son. And she's like, Oh yeah, well, you know, when you retire, you know, when you retire, she says, I've been trying to call you, reach you. I said, I'm sorry, I'm playing front tech, but I just got so many balls. I'm juggling and I'm so, I'm so busy. She says, well, when you retire, you won't be that busy. I said, I'm never planning on retiring. Yeah. She's like, well, what do you do? And I tell her the kind of work that I do. I said, you see, my work is not work. It's a calling. Yeah. But when I was in nursing, I always felt like I was working. So there's a big difference. Yeah. That whole thing that's a cliche. If you love your job, you never work a day in your life. But people say that a lot because it's true. And I guess you don't really know that until you live it. <laughs> oh, my God. I remember before, for two years when I was stuck, when I met all my dreams and I'm stuck. Mm -hmm. And I would hear it. And um, I think the person that I heard it from was, Jack can't fill. And I said uh -huh. to myself, how could you never feel like you're working a day in your life? This is so <laughs> oh, I don't get it. Yeah. Now I'm like, I never work a day in my life. <laughs> yes, I love this that. Work for me. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, it is true when you really find your passion, when you really find your calling. And so when I work with my clients, the very thing that I do is I do a full own assessment. Mm -hmm. There's a workbook that I give them that walks them through some questions because we want to figure out, you know, because sometimes we want to leave corporate America because it, it, it's hurtful. And then we right. want to go over here and start a business, but that's not the business that's in alignment with us. Right. You're going to you know, end up feeling that, like you're working what we too. We really love to do. We, I work more on helping you as well to find your purpose because when you find your purpose, you're going to be able to grow that business because you love it. All your energy is going through it. You're never tired. You're never working. And what do you think is going to happen is you're going to build 
the business that you love. You're going to build the business that's profitable. You're going to build the business that makes you happy, that gives you freedom, flexibility, and energy. So it's great. Can't you tell? Absolutely. I love this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just going to ask next if someone's listening to this and they've been looking for you. How do they find you? Are you on social media? I'm sure you have a website or two. I do. My website is embracethemirror.com. And okay. also, um, I have Find Your Purpose, Live Your Passion workbook that they can download. So okay. it's Embrace the Mirror uh, forward slash workbook forward okay. slash um, another for them to get access to the workbook. But if you go okay. to embracethemirror.com, um, you'll read up all about me. I've got tons of interviews that you can listen to. So yeah, it's awesome. Perfect. And uh, are you on social media too? I know you said when I you're am. I'm, 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 I'm on Facebook. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter. Um, okay. You can find me on LinkedIn. And, and, and I was just having a big win celebration. I started Pinterest. Oh, and I'm okay. like, I got my first follower on Pinterest. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, I'll make sure all of those links are in the show notes so that anyone who's listening has easy access to find you on all of those networks as well. So hopefully we can grow your Pinterest following since that's brand new. <laughs> but I love the celebration of big wins. That's so much. I, started think, I don't think my mompreneurs, I don't think mompreneurs are on Pinterest. <laughs> oh, I'm like, yes, they are. Yes, they are. <laughs> I love that so much. So I'm sure that in all of this, um, exploration and learning and building something new that you've done some reading. So I am curious what your book recommendations are. Oh, wow. I have a, I have a lot. I tend to read over the same books over and over again. Yeah. Uh, one of them is the four agreement. I've heard great things. I need to read that still. Oh, I really love that book. Um, my favorite of all time is, um, Napoleon Hill, Think Rich, Grow Rich. Yep. And, and I love that book because okay. the first time I read that book, I had just graduated nursing school and I wanted to make $80,000. Yeah. And I read it and I'm like, where's the part where you get rich? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> there is nothing in this book. This is like Chinese. <laughs> You're hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I tossed it away. <laughs> so I get to the book ten years later. I'm like, oh, it's mindset. It's principles. It's <laughs> so I, I still read that book because a lot of it has really, um, you know, really helped me grow. The other one that I really enjoy is um, the science of being rich. Okay. Um, I really enjoy enjoy that book. Um, yeah, I have I have tons of them, but I read the one book that I read every time I'm making a bold move. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but it's by Spencer Johnson, Who Moved My Cheese. Um, I've read Who Moved My Cheese. I haven't yes. heard of The Science of Being Rich, so I'll have to check that one out too. But I am a fan of Who Moved My Cheese, especially yes. I'm from Wisconsin, so we love anything to do with cheese. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, yeah, so who moved my cheese? Um, I love that book because every time I'm in fear, every time I'm making a bold move, mm -hmm. um, I go back and I read the book and I'm able to find out who am I being right now? Yeah. <laughs> I love Which that. One of these four little characters in my right now, and I usually could find myself and go, oh, this is who you're being right now. And it's it just a great book for change. So every time I'm making a change in business, wherever I'm at, I go back and I read it. I love that. And I love that you just said that you keep reading the same books over and over because I think, at least for myself, I can be guilty of wanting to hoard information. And so I'll be like, well, I'm just going to read three or four more books on XYZ. So then I really know what I'm doing. And then I never do anything because I'm just gathering information. But if you can find the right couple books that you can keep going back to and actually take action on or utilize the information, even if it's just thinking like, which of these four characters am I being and how can I work with that? I think that's way more valuable than reading 400 books. And yeah, it is. And, I'm, and, and I'm a, I, I love to read and I still read 
a lot of books. People send me books all the time now. As a matter of fact, I just got off the phone with Adam Markell, and he's like, have you read my book, Pivot? I'm like, no. And he's like, well, I'm going to put one in the mail for you right now. And I yeah. love to read and I read, but then I find the books, you know, like um, Think Rich, Grow Rich. It's another one that I read constantly that I'm like, okay, if I can just take these books and apply these principles in my life, Mm -hmm. um, and do it over and over again. So it's just not like, Oh yes, this was a nice read. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I even have that with my podcast where I'm like, okay, these interviews are great. And if you listen to them or watch them and they make you feel good, I'm so happy. But if you don't do anything with what you're listening to or watching, it may as well be keeping up with that K family whose name I refuse to mention, except for, you know, a little bit better, I'd like to think, input than that. But if you don't do anything with it, it's really just entertainment. So Yeah, yeah. And that's it. the thing when, when clients work with me, they're they're, you know, I have a um I just have somebody inside of my global leadership community who's struggling and she's stuck on something. Yeah. And, and I said, well, you want to hop on a call because it's just, I like to give back. I said, I'll, I'll, I'll coach you through it, but you sure. know, this is not for pay. And, um, and so I gave her work to do, you know, she, she got yeah. this, just, that's what you do to your clients. And I'm like, well, yeah, because <laughs> it's a beautiful conversation <laughs> and you get no result. The results come with the implementation. Absolutely. And anyway, she, she had to do my workbook because she's sort of confused about what the next layer is. So I gave her some stuff to do. And, you know, it was so great because she went on my Facebook and she made this comment and she said, um, you know, I thought this was going to take six months or 21 days within three days of doing that kind of work. I was able to, um, I was able to move past my block. So you have to do the work. Otherwise it just becomes a great conversation. And yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely. I, that's the same. Whenever I chat with my business coach, I'm like, okay, and I want homework. So please give me homework. Oh, I always get, I call it, I have an action <laughs> that I send to my clients. It's an yeah. action sheet, action one, action two, and yeah. your due date. So because <laughs> only, I'm getting ready to put my very first event together. I'm doing a one day seminar mm -hmm. and, um, and, 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 and I've been talking about the seminar that I'm doing. And one of the coaches was like, well, what are you going to do? I said, well, I don't want it to just be, let's go and have a good time. Right. Yeah. Um, I have a friend who would go to every seminar with me and she would buy the stuff and do nothing with it. Yeah. Uh, part of it had become fun. We're hanging out, you know, we sure. go the food, you know, it's great. It's a great it's like vibe, church. good energy. It's like Absolutely. Church. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I said, no, at my seminar, there's going to be exercises that you have to really do. So if you're stuck on your vision mission statement, guess what? Today we're going to work on at the seminar. We're going to yeah. work on your vision mission statement. Yeah, you know, we're going to work yeah. on what you're stuck at so that we can get you to move past being stuck so you can move on. Yeah, I love that. So since we have this platform here for anybody that's listening or watching, if there's anything that you haven't said, that's a message that you want to give out. If there's any lessons you've learned recently that you wish you learned a long time ago or that you would just like to share any extra value or parting words that you have, I guess, sort of for the audience. What would you like to share? Well, there is one thing that I would, there's a quote that I love and it's by Dr. Martha Luther King. Dr. Martha Luther King says, if you can't fly, then run. Mm -hmm. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. Mm -hmm. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving. And I read that quote every single day because sometimes in my business, I feel some days I just have to crawl, mm -hmm. but you just got to keep moving. So it doesn't matter what, what step you're taking today, but you got to take a first step. I and when that. that's done, you got to take the next step. Yeah, that's beautiful and timely, even though the recording's coming out much later. Dr. King day was Monday. So just a few days ago. So it's wonderful to have him on the brain again, because that's definitely someone to look up to. Yes. So my last question, I always say for last because it's my favorite. And I used to like to ask people even before I had a podcast, but I think it's 
extra fun in this case because you talk about being 10 years old and really aiming toward that $80,000 goal. So we're going to go a couple years before that. And um, I always like to ask people if eight-year-old you, so little eight-year-old Naomi had a crystal ball and can look and see where you are. I know at one point you said 32 was in your rear view mirror, even though you have beautiful skin and look younger than 32 now. I know you're older than that. But see how you are, where you are today, planning that one day workshop event and your foreseeable future as well, you know, the next few weeks, months, whatever you have planned out, God willing, it all goes through well. On a scale of one to 11, how excited would little Naomi be to see where you are now? I'd be like a 20! <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> I love it. It's funny because I just had a birthday and I love aging and my surrogate mom says, I've never seen somebody who loves to age like you. Like it's an <laughs> excitement, it's an adventure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I really love my journey. I really, uh, and I think for me in the beginning, there was a lot of shame. There was a lot of guilt. Mm -hmm. um, but everything that I went through was really preparing me for who I was becoming in the world. Yeah. And so, so when I look back at my eight-year-old self, it's like, wow, look, look where you were mm -hmm. and look who you are now. And so it just really gives me hope that some other eight-year-old in the inner city can one day watch my interview and said, you know, look at this woman, look at her now. Maybe that can be me someday. I love that so much. And I was very confident that you weren't going to say like, oh, a four or anything like that. So that 20 even <laughs> exceeded my <laughs> expectations, the celebration there. And I like it, you know, like I, I like the perspective of thinking of aging as leveling up. Like, oh, I'm on level 37. <laughs> yes, yes. It's, it's yeah. just, there's, there's nothing more beautiful about it. And I, I have uh, one of my my fellow leaders and my global leadership, she's, we're the same age and she's going yeah. through, through having, she has gray hair and yeah. she's going through not wanting to color it anymore because the grays are coming out. And I'm like, I look for my grays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My really don't know. Know. <laughs> um, but, but if you look at it is you become more comfortable in who you are, you yeah. begin to find more of your essence of, what you're truly here to do. Um, it's just such a beautiful process to take a look at where you were to where you're now. Yeah, absolutely. And so thank you so much. I think you're popular. I'm right now. sorry. I <laughs> turned my cell phone off. <laughs> no problem. Happens to the best of us. I think we've all been there. But thank you so much for what you're doing in the world. Thank you so much for your enthusiasm and excitement. It's been an absolute pleasure to chat with you and hear your story. So thank you very much. Yes. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. And um, yeah, I'm just... I'm just on fire. <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> I hope you enjoyed her story and her energy and her incredible laugh as much as I did. Make sure you stay tuned to Friday because there will be a wonderful challenge from Naomi for you to enjoy. I hope that you are bold all week. I hope that you subscribe and share this episode with anyone who you think will find it inspirational or motivational. And I hope that you leave reviews on iTunes because I would like to reach as many people as I possibly can so that hopefully they hear something of themselves in the incredible guests that I have and the bold moves that they make. And then I hope that you or your friends or your family or whoever you share it with are inspired to make bold moves of your own and go after your dreams. That is my personal goal and dream. And it'll help me if you share this with people. And it also helps if Apple and iTunes share this with people and they will do that if I get five-star ratings. Now, if you have some constructive criticism, I am all about learning. I want to make this as great as I possibly can for you. So if you are interested in giving me some feedback and a less than five-star review, I will take that as well as an opportunity to learn. All right. Thank you so much for listening. As always, be bold and have a sparkly day. Bye-bye.